This video will extend the concept of derivatives for one-dimensional functions to the concept of partial derivatives for multi-dimensional functions. So let's say I have some function w, which is a function of x, y, and z. So I plotted w on my y-axis here, and a slice of w through the x-axis here. So it has some type of, it has some type of shape to it. Uh, I can go through the same kind of logic I did in the regular derivatives video, where I can have a point A and a point B. The function has some value at f of a, sorry, at f of a, y, z, and f of b, y, z. So the change in the function between those two points in this one-dimensional slice will be delta w equals f of b, y, z minus f of a, y, z. And the change in x over this range would be delta x equals b minus a, which is equal to the value h. So if I take the average rate of change from a to b, I have delta w over delta x, which is the change in y over the change in x. So it's the rise over run. So I go down a little bit and I, and I extend forward this far. So that's whatever the difference in f of b, y, z minus f of a, y, z over b minus a equals. But I can extend the same kind of concept that I did for derivatives to these types of multi-dimensional functions as well. Because this is a secant line, it goes through the function twice between a and b. But as I bring a and b closer and closer, I'm getting more and more like the function itself, and I'm getting a better and better approximation to what the function's instantaneous rate of change is. So if I have a tangent line to the function, a function that touches the line only at one point, I have the instantaneous rate of change by the slope of the tangent line. So the instantaneous rate of change, and now with the caveat of saying that it's at a constant y and z, is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of delta w over delta x. So this is the extra caveat here now that instead of being the total function, this is a one-dimensional slice through a two or three or four or however many you like dimensional function. <clears throat> In this case, it's a three-dimensional function. So we can define what is called a partial derivative here. So that gives us this sign with this kind of squiggly D instead of the standard uh, you know, Roman alphabet D. So I have squiggly D, squiggly X, or DW DX is equal to d f x y z dx, the partial derivative with respect to x. The d dx is the partial derivative operator for x. That's equal to the limit as h, my change in x, goes to 0 for f of x plus h y z minus f of x y z over h. It's the instantaneous rate of change just by changing the x variable and leaving y and z unchanged. I could get the same result for partial with respect to y or partial derivative with respect to z if I replaced uh, z x with y or z in this case. If I went to y plus h or z plus h, I could have gotten their partial derivatives. And the nice thing about that is once we do this, all the same rules that apply for total derivatives with respect to x apply for partial derivatives. So things like how you take the derivative of a polynomial, uh, trigonometric function, exponential, logarithm, constant, product rule, chain rule, sum rule, quotient rule, multiple rule. All of those things apply for the partial derivative just with just making sure that you're taking only the derivatives with respect to x. So let's do some examples and clarify what that means. So what if I want the partial derivative with respect to x for 2xy plus 3x squared z squared. Okay, basically, we treat y and z just like they're any other constant, and then we take a normal derivative of x. So the derivative of a, of a linear function would be the constant, so 2yx becomes 2y. And then the derivative of x squared is 2x, then times 3z squared. So that's plus 6 x z squared. So that's how we would do that for a polynomial with a sum or a multiple. Same kind of rules that we would expect. We're treating y and z as constants while we're taking derivatives of x. 
Okay, what if we do derivative with respect to y of xyz sine xyz? Okay, well, we treat x and z as constants and we take the derivative with respect to y. So this would be a, a product rule. So I'd have xz sine xyz plus xyz cosine xyz. You can check yourself that if you imagine y and z as constants, that that is in fact the correct product rule for that function. Okay, now what about, okay, let's just, we can just do some more examples. So I have derivative with respect to z of y squared natural log of z. Derivative of log z is 1 over z, so this is y squared over z. All right, and then let's say I want to take that derivative with respect to y instead. Derivative of y squared times the log of z is equal to 2y, natural log of z. All right, we're taking some things there. Let's do some final examples. Let's say partial derivative with respect to y of xy e to the minus zy squared will be equal to, that's a product rule and a chain rule, so that's going to be x e to the minus zy squared minus 2 x y squared e to the minus, sorry, minus 2, minus, that's a z, not a 2. I should be able to read my own writing. Okay. Minus 2z xy squared e to the minus z y squared. And lastly, just for fun, what is the partial derivative of, with respect to x of, let's say, sine e to the y squared? Well, there's no x. So it's zero. If there's no x in that term, then it's a constant, and the derivative of a constant is zero. So that's the basics of partial derivatives, how those work. Um, all the rules are the same as the standard derivatives, just treating all the other variables as constants while you take those derivatives. And uh, that is the basics of partial derivatives.